Dearest new neighbor of 657 Boulevard. Allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. How did you end up here? Did 657 Boulevard call to you with its force within? 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now. And as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s, and my father watched in the 1960s. It is now, now my time. Who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I am in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Look out any of the many windows in 657 Boulevard at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. You have children. I have seen them. So far, I think there are three that I have counted. Do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for the growing family? Or was it greed to bring me your children? I, I am, am the, the watcher. watcher. Hey guys, if you like taking deep dives into wild conspiracy theories, listening to a scary good ghost story, or investigating into the supernatural, then this is the channel for you. Go ahead and tap that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell so you get updates for weekly content just like this. Now, let's get back to the story. In June of 2014, Derek and Maria Broadus could not wait to move their family into the home of their dreams, a $1.3 million sprawling mansion at 657 Boulevard in Westfield, New Jersey. For Derek, Maria, and their three children, life was the American dream. And I know for myself, I've had this same dream, being financially stable, buying the house of my dreams, and giving my family the best life I possibly can. And I think everybody has that dream in one way or another. But what would you do if one day you walked outside, inhaling the fresh morning air, a warm cup of coffee in your hand, and a smile on your face, only to open your mailbox and find a letter from a stranger, a stranger who seems to know a lot about you, your family, and your home. And this stranger makes it known that they're watching you from various shadows and windows up and down your quiet street. And not only that, they want to lure out your children to them and do God only knows what. It would be something straight out of a horror movie or a Stephen King novel, a nightmare. But for Derek Broaddus, this exact story was his reality. I read the first letter to you at the top of this video, and the first time I read it through, I had a chill run up and down my entire spine. The Watcher claims that he and his family go back generations, watching the beautiful six-bed, three-bathroom, shingle-style home since the 1920s, almost the same amount of time since the house was first built back in 1905. The Broaddus family did alert the police after they received the letter, and to their shock, or rather, to their horror, they learned that the previous owners had also received a mysterious letter from this watcher, though their situation was a bit different. They had already been living in the home for 23 years by that point, and they assumed the letter was a vicious prank and threw it in the trash without a second thought. So, of course, the letter was never mentioned to the Broaddus family upon their purchase of the home. They'd received this one letter from some ridiculous prankster. Maybe life would just go on and be blissful for the Broaddus family, but maybe not. Another letter found its way into the Broaddus mailbox. The family's name was misspelled and the handwriting was sloppy, but none of that took away from the terror that these letters brought the Broadduses. At one point in the second letter, it reads, It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of this house. Have you found all of the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement? Or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. And it should come as a shock to 
literally no one that the Broaddus family actually never moved into the house after receiving these threatening letters. Even after all the money spent, time waiting, and renovations that they'd done to their new home, they couldn't shake the fear that came with these strange, cryptic messages. So they started making moves to try and sell 675 Boulevard. They put the house back on the market and wouldn't you know it, months passed without so much as an offer. However, the Broaddus family did play a part in this as Derek and Maria made a point to tell anybody about the letters if they were interested in the house. Months turned into years. And though the family had not received any more letters, the house sat empty. At one point, the family even attempted to try and get the property torn down, but the Westfield Planning Board, with its community backing it up, rejected the idea. It was finally in the spring of 2016 that a family with, let's be honest, balls of steel, agreed to move in the house as renters. Letters and the watcher be damned. And that was when the nightmare started all over again. A third letter, more angry and aggressive than the previous two, arrived. It went on to scold Maria and Derek for the press coverage that the story was getting and thank the neighborhood on 675 Boulevard, their soldiers, for preventing the house from being demolished. And then the threats. One part of the letter read as follows. Maybe a car accident, maybe a fire, maybe something as simple as an illness that never seems to go away, but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet. Loved ones suddenly die. Planes and cars and bicycles crash. Bones break. But what I think is even more insane than the third letter is that the renters, the good old balls of steel, they stayed in the property. Their one request added security cameras, which is fair. No one has ever been caught or identified as the Watcher, but there is a list of theories and suspects. Michael Langford, 657's neighbor who went on to inspire Jasper Winslow from the hit Netflix series, was questioned but never arrested. Another suspect from the area who was known to play violent video games was also questioned over his username, The Watcher. A DNA test was eventually done on one of the letters, and to everybody's surprise, the DNA results came back matching to a female. Michael Langford's sister, Abby, who was a real estate agent in the area, was considered a suspect for a time, and even Maria Broaddus herself. But the list ends there. While the show The Watcher loosely follows the real-life Broaddus family, Netflix of course took some creative liberties. So if you don't want any spoilers, I would try to fast forward through as much of this as possible. So here are some of the differences from the real life story of the Broaddus family and the sensationalized TV show. Unlike the Brannock family and the TV show, the Broaddus family never actually lived in the home. Like I said, the letters scared them senseless and they just decided they didn't even want to risk living there. At one point in the show, we see people in red hoods drinking the blood of a baby. But in real life, aside from the letters, nothing like that ever happened. So the number of letters are also exaggerated in the TV show. The previous owners only received one letter before the Broaddus family, and the Broaddus family in total only received those three. And unlike the Netflix series suggests, there was actually no one ever murdered in the home. So if you watch the show, then you'll know about the character John Graff, who is this super weird building inspector who's a little bit too interested in Dean and his personal life and the house. And later on through a detective, Dean learns about John Graff and how he murdered his entire family in the home. While the show's John Graff is entirely fictional, the real life John List is not. In another home on Boulevard on November 9th, 1971. John List shot each and every one of his family members. First, his own mother and wife, and then his three children. John fled the scene and disappeared into an entirely new life. The life of a man named Robert P. Clark. And Robert remarried and got a job in accounting. And he thought he'd spend the rest of his days as Robert living happily ever after. But on June 1st, 1989, List was apprehended and arrested. And he would go on to die in prison on March 21st, 2008 at the age of 82 years old. And I don't want to go too much into details of the crime or why he did it because I don't want to over sensationalize this guy. He's a monster. However, the reason I decided to bring it up in this video is because it felt somewhat pertinent. 
it left me with this huge question. What the hell is going on on Boulevard Street? So that's the real life story of the Broadus family, the very family that inspired the hit Netflix TV show, The Watcher. And I don't know what to make of it. It's there's so many weird things about this story. I mean, one, the fact that there's a family who's watching this house, waiting for its second coming. Like, what does that mean? And what's so special about this house? From what I read, nobody ever mentions that there was anything in particular that happened around this house, just that this alleged watcher and his family were weirdly obsessed with it. But then it begs the question for me, if they already lived on the street, and they liked the house, why didn't they ever consider purchasing it? It, it, it literally, it doesn't make any sense. It, it makes no sense to me. And then I start to wonder, what is going on with this street? I mean, you have one guy who offs his entire family on the street. You've got another guy and his ancestors who have been watching this house for however long, sending creepy, weird letters. I, I don't know. And, and it's not even a dude, allegedly. It could be a female. But is it just her or are there multiple people working this whole thing? I I don't know. It, the whole thing is so bizarre and strange to me. And I just, I was left with more questions than answers. I don't think we'll ever really know what's going on in that house, but maybe one day we'll find out. I, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, you guys, go ahead. Don't forget to like the video. Comment below what your theories are, who you think might have been responsible. I know one theory suggested that the Broadus family may have done it themselves because they spent money they didn't have on the house and wanted to try and back out of it. And they did eventually go on to sell it, but they, I guess, took a massive loss, which checks out with the story that's now widely out in the public. And to my knowledge, no other letters have ever been received. So I, I don't know, you guys. I really don't. Anyway, next time I see you, we'll be getting spooky. All right, guys. Bye.